if you watched my previous video regarding the 555 chip, and I will leave a link in the description below, then you will know that this comparator here controls this set pin of this flip-flop, and this comparator controls the reset pin of the, this flip-flop. So when this trigger pin reaches less than one third of your supply voltage, and I had this at nine volts, if this is three volts or less, then the output of this will go high and therefore set the flip-flop. The flip-flop will output will go high. We actually take the inverted, this bar Q or not Q. This, this gets inverted, but that gets inverted again through the driver. So the output will go high. So if that set pin there is high from this comparator, the output is high. Then when you get a reset signal from this comparator, it triggers the reset, it will go low. And this comparator will go high when the voltage on this threshold pin is greater than or equal to two thirds of the supply voltage. So at nine volts, that would have been six volts. So when that got to six volts or more, that would go high and reset the flip-flop. But what if you had the set and the reset held high? And many of you asked this question in the comments of the video. So let's take a look. So what we're looking at here then is a condition where this trigger pin is held at a voltage which is one third or less of your supply rail. In other words, this comparator will turn on and the set will be held high of this flip-flop. And the threshold is set to a voltage that's two thirds or greater of your supply rail. So this comparator would turn on and also your reset pin is being held high. So let's say we had nine volts over here then we're looking at a condition where this is less than or equal to three volts and this pin is held at greater than or equal to six volts three volts being one third voltage at this point six volts being two thirds voltage at this point so in this condition then where the output of this comparator is high and this comparator is high in other words both the set and the reset pins of this flip-flop are triggered what is the output going to be is it going to be high is it going to be low is it going to be some kind of random state and what happens if this set gets triggered before reset does that mean that this gets priority over that and and vice versa well actually one of my viewers pointed out that the answer is in the data sheet already so here it is it, this little truth table on the data sheet ignore this reset column here that's why i've crossed it out that reset is not the reset of the flip-flop it's talking about this one so we're only interested in this being pulled high okay at the moment so forget that column but this row here look it tells you if the trigger or if the trigger voltage is less than or equal to one third in other words compared to one is triggered then the voltage on the threshold is irrelevant the output will be high so there's your answer but i'm not going to stop this video there i want to put this to the test and i want to try other any 555 sorry any other 555 chips that i can lay my hands on and see if they all behave in the same way so let's have a look at that so this is how i'm going to test it then i'm going to obviously wire my ground and my supply as nine volts and then on the trigger pin i will have a pull-up resistor to the vcc or nine volts so that means this is held at nine volts until I press this momentary push button, which is tied to ground. So this will be a low output when I start, and when I push that, this will go high. In other words, trigger the set pin. And then on the threshold pin, I'll do the opposite. I put a pull down resistor to ground here, and then the momentary push button switch will take it to VCC. So when I press that, this will trigger and the reset will trigger. Okay, let's have a look, see what happens. So you go, there's the first 555 chip there. I've got the supply coming in to pin eight and my ground on pin one. I've also put the 0.1 microfarad capacitor there on the control pin, not necessarily, but I'll put it anyway. Then I've got an LED on the output pin, so through this resistor to the LED. The LED is grounded on this leg, so the diode is, the, the LED is this way polarized. So when this goes high, the LED will come on. Then you can see on the trigger pin over here, pin two, I've put the resistor to the supply rail, so it's held high until I press this red switch, which will ground it. Okay, so red indicating that that's the set pin of the flip-flop. In other words, I expect the LED to come on. Then on this side, it's kind of the opposite. This is the threshold pin. 
uh, 1k resistor to ground this time and when I press this switch then it's pulled high to, directly to the supply rail so if I press the set pin now this, this set button now then you can see the LED comes on it's set and it's latched and if I press reset it goes off so now what happens if I push and hold them together yeah it stays on so the, the truth table in that respect is true uh, but what if I inadvertently press that one first and then that one afterwards? Well, let's reset it first of all. So let's press the reset and hold it. And now this one, it comes on and it stays on. So there you go. Now, what about if I press them both concurrently? Well, that's going to be difficult to do. It's the only way I can really think of doing that uh, easily. I could do something a bit more elaborate, but I'll just turn the power off. Okay, so I've killed the power to it. <laughs> Then I'm going to hold these two in and try and do this. My other hand reaches over to my power supply, turn the power on. Yeah, so you just kind of take that, that they were both pressed at the same time. Now I must have let go of this one first, then that one afterwards just then. Let's do this again. So kill the power, hold both of them, turn the power on. It's come on. All right, so it's, it's stayed on this time. All right, so that does kind of prove the truth table and that the set overrides the reset if they're both high. So next up is the Texas Instruments SA555P. Okay, so the set button comes on, reset, goes off. Hold the reset and press set, comes on, and it stays on if I release them in the right order. Reset, both together, stays on. Set and then reset, stays on. Yeah, so same. So next up is the Texas Instruments TLC 555 IP. Now I know this one is a CMOS device, so let's try that. So again, press set, comes on, reset, goes off. Hold the reset, press set, comes on, stays on. If I release in the right order, let's clear that. Hold set, then press reset, stays on. So yeah, that's the same thing. Try and press them both at the same time. Yeah, same thing. Next up is Text Instruments SE555P. There you go, set, comes on, reset, goes off. Hold reset, press set, comes on, stays on. Reset that, hold set, then press reset, stays on. Okay, reset, press them both together, and stays on. Okay, same thing. Right, this next 555 is a little bit different. It's the ICM 7555 or 556. I'm actually using this 7556, which is the one I've got, and it's actually a dual uh, 555 chip. And it's basically it's an enhanced version. Dual, dual is my one, and it tells you here that it's significantly improved. It's a CMOS device, and I did note that it doesn't require the decoupling capacitor to make it stable, so you don't need to put that capacitor on the control voltage pin. Okay, and the the dual 555 is basically this. It's a 14-pin device. You've got one 555 down here and another one down here. So I've got to rewire the breadboard to accommodate that, and we'll do a test on that. But just before we do that, I did notice it's got its own truth table in its data sheet. This is the data sheet. And yes, there's another truth table here. At first I thought it was uh, the other way around. I thought that this is going to behave differently, but no, it's just that you can see here, this goes threshold, then trigger. And on the Texas Instrument ones, it says trigger, then threshold. So that's the reason I got confused there. But it's exactly the same thing. So. If we've got here, our trigger is less than one third of the or supply voltage, it doesn't matter what the threshold is set to, you're gonna get an output of high. So let's try that. So there you go, that's the ICM 7556, dual, it's a dual 555 chip, as I said, and I've used the 555 that's down on this side. And I've wired it, obviously, to match as before. So over here, I've got the reset switch, it's, it's pulled to low with this resistor, and the switch pulls it high. So that is on the threshold pin there, okay? And then this one, this is pulled uh, high, sorry, initially, and then when you press the switch, it then shorts to ground. And that is on the trigger pin, 
okay? Now, I've got no power coming in at the moment. I've turned it off, and the reason for that is I noted that the default state of the output is different on this chip, so I'm going to turn the power on now. And there you go, you can see the output is latched at high when you first power on. So that's, that's slightly different. So if I press reset, goes off, press set, goes on. If I hold, sorry, let's turn it off. If I hold reset and press set, it comes on and stays on. If I press set and hold reset, it still stays on. Okay, so it seems to behave the same. If I hold them both down, yep, same thing. If I hold them down, well, this is going to be different with this one because it's, its default state is on. Let's turn the power off anyway. Hold them both down and turn the power on. And yeah, it's come on and it'll stay latched until I press reset. So that appears to behave the same. The, the truth table is true. <laughs> and um, the only difference is when you first power on, the output is latched high. Okay. And finally, a Texas Instruments chip, similar to one I've just done, actually. It's another dual 555. It's CMOS. Uh, the pinout is compatible with the chip I've just done, so that's good. I haven't got to rearrange the breadboard. And if I look at the truth table for this one, it's exactly the same rule. So here, when the trigger voltage is low state, then the threshold voltage is irrelevant. It will always give you a high, but let's give that a try. There you go, that's the chip inserted into the exact same position. And I've powered this up. The default state of this is off. So this is similar to other 555s, but not like the last one I've just done. So if I press set, it comes on. Press reset, it goes off. If I hold reset and press set, it comes on and stays on. Okay. If I hold set and press reset, it stays on as well. So And if I press together they it comes on and stays on so there you go that's pretty conclusive if you can currently trigger the set and the reset of this flip-flop then the output will always be high maybe a bit unnecessary goes for all them chips but i found it quite fun and unless you test you don't know 100 percent and i was curious whether there was any of those variants that actually give a different behavior Anyway, hope you found this video useful. If you did, please click the like button. And if you haven't done so already, then please subscribe too. All right, catch you later.